the initial thing Matteo was thinking about was, can we kick the garage door by building this in? I was nervous about how that was going to look. Right. Uh, I'm. What about decreasing the size of the door? I'm Anthony Carino. I've built and renovated hundreds of homes over the last decade. My next project, though, is something very personal. I'm taking an old firehouse in Jersey City, and I'm converting it into a home. My home. This is the Build TV, the firehouse project. It's insane! So living in various apartments and condos over the last 20 years, and now finally moving into a house, there are two things I wanted to make sure I got right. One was an awesome office, and two, a garage. So as I'm designing here in my chief architect software, it's becoming more and more clear to me that putting the office at the front of the building on the second floor, which happens to be directly over the garage, is really the best place for it. I've got a big, beautiful picture window that allows me to look out over the park, and it gives me the ability to leave a section of my original floor-to-ceiling built-ins. Of course, the thing I'm most excited about functioning fire pole going in the front corner of my office that I'll be able to slide down right into the garage. You know, being able to have a private garage in a city is a rarity. This is the garage. The wall is right here. We've got the door from the hallway and the downstairs living quarters right into the garage area. And I want to make sure the garage has enough room for both our cars, motorcycle, little workshop area, and just some general storage. The demo is well underway. The project is moving along, but it looks like we may have an issue with this garage door. So this is Julie from Aquarius Door. Julie is the one who's gonna be installing the Clope garage door. Now, I asked her to come to site today because I am having a meltdown when it comes to the location and the dimension for the fire pole. Have a fire pole that we need to get in next to the garage door track, and I looked at the cut sheet wrong. I thought the 37 inch circumference was it. It's not there's a fire enclosure that's wider. So it's 51 and a half right. by 47. Right. So we got to look at how this thing is going to be positioned, okay. if it matters, and then can we fit it inside the track? Okay. That's the whole thing. Okay. The front of the firehouse is kicked on an angle. That means that when the garage door goes up, that track actually begins to get closer to the side wall of the building, thereby crunching the amount of space that I have to get this fire pole and the floor enclosure bolted into the ceiling. I'm not quite sure that this is gonna fit. The initial thing Matteo was thinking about was, can we kick the garage door by building this in? I was nervous about how that was gonna look. Right, what about decreasing the size of the door? Yeah, I mean, you could, garage doors, your wood custom door is in one inch increments. You could tell me, you know, to make it 10 feet, seven inches, you know? And then what, we just have to pack out the wood? Yes. And that is the beauty of going with a completely custom garage door. Because I have not signed the order yet, and because I have not placed my door into production at Clope, I can make any adjustments I need. So taking one inch off of each side of the garage door allows me to bring the rails just far enough away from the side walls of the firehouse to make sure that the floor enclosure for the fire pole fits. That's a complete solve. And taking two inches off the opening isn't gonna change the historical right. appeal of this building. I, 100%. Okay, amazing. Thank awesome, you. guys. Thank Perfect. you. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Julie. Great. Nice. Thanks. Nice meeting you. We've figured this out. There is no way I'm losing this fire pole. All right, so I'm heading out to the Clopay factory in Ohio. I'm gonna check out how these doors are made. Should be at the factory in about 15, 20 minutes. It'll be an awesome day. All right, made it here at Clope. Their Rushi, Ohio factory is a 400,000 square foot facility where they make all their custom doors. We got suited up with our safety gear. You gotta have glasses and, uh, and neon for the floor. So uh, guys are gonna take me through now and find out how these doors are made. This is our tour guide for the day. So we are heading into the factory. So these are, these are your doors right this here. This is my door. Absolutely. <laughs> So the style of this door is very much that of an old carriage house. The garage doors look like they're gonna open like this. There's two X's that are cross bucks here. We've got hinges that'll be on either side and we're gonna have carriage door handle pulls in the center. That's all for show. 
The garage door will go right up overhead, will function like your typical garage door. Yeah, what they're doing is they're scuffing the primer off of there. Okay. So they're gonna scuff that up, fill all the nail holes, fill any seams, and then they're gonna caulk the door. It's really important that we do waterproof the internals of it. So they're gonna caulk the yeah, door. Yeah, this is the Northeast, it's super important. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, you know all too well. Oh yeah. Each and every step is done by hand. These guys do not mess around. I was excited about this door. Now I'm super excited about this door. Absolutely freaking incredible. They're going in the booth now. First coat of paint's going on them. See it all come together is absolutely incredible. All right, guys, that concludes the tour of Clope. The level of quality these guys put into each and every door they make is absolutely incredible. Super, super impressive. I'll see you guys back in Jersey. ABC Harding, right here. Can we for a sec? Yeah, that's for me. Yep, fire poles here. <laughs> All right, the day is here, it has arrived. So the fire pole is really coming together. The pole has arrived, the safety gates have arrived, and the floor has arrived. Oh, 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 oh my yes. God. This this is gonna sit on the floor, right upstairs. So yes, we're gonna have to correct. take this off, and put, yep. make the circle, that put drops the, in. And, and drops that in. So then this gets then connected to this. Right, the, and then With this the plate, the, the fire doors mount to, mount to that. So we start this install with the floor. We cut a hole in the floor and install the flange. Then later, we'll finish the install of the safety gate. <laughs> yeah! Holy sh That's so freaking cool. The day has finally arrived. The garage door is getting installed today. How are you? How are you? What's your name? David. David, Anthony. Nice to meet Good you. Good to man. meet you, man. Alrighty. We got it all cleaned out for you. Perfect. Clope has a series of dealers around the country. Aquarius Door is in my area, and they are one of their master installers, so I am really excited for them to get moved. One of the changes to note with the new garage door install, there will no longer be a center track with a chain back to a motor. We're going with a direct drive, meaning the garage door opener from LiftMaster is actually gonna be wall mounted, and it's gonna be a direct drive into the motor itself. Why? Way, way, way quieter, way less vibration. <laughs> Hold on. No. The old door is dead. <laughs> All right, love you, bye. If there is anything that is gonna transform the front facade of this building, it is going to be this massive custom garage door from Clope. The Clope garage door is in, and so is the LiftMaster garage door opener with the remote button. As far as the garage door opener, I'm very excited about this. Uh, this is a deadbolt lock, much like you have on any standard residential door. When this door comes down, this lock automatically engages. So when I push the garage door button, this automatically opens because it is attached. So a little bit of additional security. So here we go, inaugural open. Super quiet. This is a huge door, opens it effortlessly. Not gonna lie, it's very satisfying. Oh man, that is just... Ah, oh. everything, 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 everything. So today we're back in the office. We are getting my gray pants scrap lights hung up around the fire pole. Those are one of two elements that I saved from when this was our office. So those five lights lived over our spiral staircase. And now that we're in the finishing stages, they are going back into my office around the fire pole. The other day, Bernardo and I laid out the spacing for them. Now we're gonna lay out their heights because we wanna get a variation of heights so that we get as much pattern dancing on the walls as possible. Take that one too. Okay. Is that? No, that's gonna work. I like that height. <laughs> this is called going with your gut. Have a look-see together. Hell freaking yeah. Oh, that looks so good. 
We got the lights hung, fire poles in. The last piece are the safety gates. And man, it is giving us one hell of a time. Oh, it's Anthony from Jersey City, the guy who oh, bought the uh, Model 23 from you. Yes, yes. Anthony yes. was on the phone with him, and the guy said, with a name like Anthony, Anthony, you can call me anytime. And I knew that was like, don't call this guy again. It's really very easy. You put your, put your brackets on your screens, on both screens. It was a little bit annoying because the help behind it was kind of like, here, just put it together. You'll be all right. Nice man? Absolutely. I mean, he's like the perfect grandfather. But useful information? Not, not so much. So the basic concept is we've got the round sleeve that goes in the floor with the brass flange on top. The safety gate will screw into that brass flange. It has two gates that'll open up so you can break the beam and have the floor below drop out. So here's a great example of where reality and TV don't line up. It looks pretty cool getting this fire pole installed, huh? Absolute total disaster. We were able to figure it all out. Instructions kind of helped throughout the project. I mean, every firehouse probably has a fire pole in it but it's not that easy. But all in all, it's put together right and it works. Now I'm picking the color for the floor stain. I've decided on a gray with a matte finish. The Juju wallpaper is going up. The floors are totally stained. The office is coming together beautifully. And now the piece I've been waiting for, <laughs> the only thing I care about right now. That's how I go to meetings from now on. Mm! Fire pole is finally done. The lights are up, paint's going on the wall, wallpaper's up. They're painting the built-ins. All right, welcome to the office. This is my home within my home. I spend an absolute ton of time in my home office. So to start, we've got the built-ins. Now, this is the only remaining piece from when we had our offices here. Fortunately, Benjamin Moore has an incredible furniture grade paint called Advance. I color match these to match wallpaper. I went with the Juju papers here in the office because this gold on charcoal pattern just totally spoke to me. Rolling ladder, a great thing to have. Um, allows me to get all the way up to the ceiling, really maximize all my storage. These are the whiskey chairs. Very extensive whiskey collection that is on my bar cart right here. Nice place to sit and have a beverage. This is the front of the firehouse. This window is picture window. Renewal by Anderson said that they could put this check rail in here for me so that the aesthetic remained the same where they all look like double hung windows. Alexa, run closed office shades. Again, these are the Serena shades by Lutron. Also have the Caseta light switches by Lutron. And I reinstalled the five moon lights over fire pole. Now, you have to have a fire rated separation between your garage, which is directly below us, and any living space, any habitable space, which is my office. How does it work? There's these little reflectors here on the gate and there's some lasers over on the opposite side. So as the gate opens, it breaks the beam of the laser, thereby letting the floor drop. These gates close automatically and if there's 20 seconds of unbroken laser, the floor will then reclose. Floor open, down we go. All right, so the garage. The first thing to say about the garage, it is way smaller than when this was an office. So this entire downstairs was a massive garage. Bring this back wall here all the way forward. We left one window in the garage. We've got one side door in the garage. This is also done by Closet Made, so I was able to do all my interior custom closets with them, and I was able to do my garage storage as well. From a design perspective, I really wanted to leave everything original in the garage, so all original subway tiles, original tin, knock down all the paint off of this, the floors. I wanted to have a really clean environment in here. Benjamin Moore has got an epoxy product that I was able to put down on the floor. It's a sanded epoxy, so there's a lot of grip in it. So after the epoxy gets, gets rolled out, you cast sand, basically just means throwing sand through the product, and you have an anti-slip surface. This door is so heavy duty, it will allow me to put one tire of my truck there. It will allow me to put, park a motorcycle over here if I want to. Clopay garage door. 
completely custom door. This is the exterior door, so it's a proprietary blend of wood and epoxy. And to lift this beast of a door, went with the LiftMaster 8500W. You can see the Wi-Fi and MyQ insignias on there. That means that it is part of the connected home. Uh, it's a smart home device. I've got an app on the phone for it. And then the last point of entry for the garage is the Anderson door. Went with frosted glass here. The hinges are fantastic. The R value is great. All right, so that's the garage. The idea here was to be able to get two cars, two motorcycles off the street in a clean, tidy environment that was super efficient to use. So hit the garage door, boom, that's it. Coming up this season on The Build TV. We go room by room to show you what it takes to convert this old firehouse into a home. Wow. Subscribe or follow at thebuild.tv to make sure you don't miss any episodes.